Hello, I recently came across this demo and I wanted to see how it's done. To my surprise, it's done on rows from top to bottom. So on the first row, we have that one greenish dot. On the second row, we have three dots, that purple one and those two greenish ones. So first row, one dot, second row, three dots, third row, five dots, and so on. The number of dots per row keeps increasing until we get to the middle and then it starts decreasing until it goes back to uh, one. Now, this seems a bit weird to me because what I'm seeing there is an assembly of two uh, grids, one uh, both square, one is a 9 by 9 grid, and in between the dots of this grid we have the dots of another smaller 8 by 8 grid. So this is how I'm seeing it. Also here the colors are uh, set on rows, so we have one color for every row of the inner grid right here. So starting from that purple one to that uh, greenish dot right there. Um, and here we have one color for every row of the outer grid, starting from that greenish color right there to that uh, purple one right there. Now, what I'll be doing today is a version with two grid elements and dots inside each of them, and also a lot more um, uh, compact on the CSS side, something like a tenth of the generated CSS. So let's see how. First off, we start with the number of dots per edge. Um, and this is for the bigger grid. And then we have the number of grids, two. Um, then we create a loop here for i starting from zero, going all the way up to p. Um, and then we increment this. And we have um, grid. Okay, uh, now let's set within the style element um, a custom property. And since we only have two grids, this basically acts uh, like a parity. Something else I want to set is uh, that n to pass it to the CSS. So uh, in order to do that, we set it right here. Okay. Uh, having done this, let's compute the number of dots per grid. And this is going to be n. And since we have a square grid, we're going to have that the number of dots is n minus i squared. And we have another root here. So um, n. And this creates the, uh, the dots. Okay. Uh, now, let's... Um, Set some basic styles. So uh, display, um, what the heck, uh, grid dot, just give it a dummy background, and uh, also set the border radius 50% so that uh, they're round. Uh, let's decide upon a diameter for the dots, something like this, and um, for the grid template. is uh, n minus p. Okay, um, this is with a non a repeat function. This is uh, the number of uh, rows and columns. And the dimension is going to be that uh, diameter. So now when we set grid template Now we should see something, and we are. Let's also set a gap, something like this, um, grid gap, okay, found that one. So now that I've done this, let's also set position absolute top 50%, left 50%, Let's also set a transform so that we put everything right in the middle. And again, minus 50%. Okay. Um, also rotate 45 degrees. Okay. Uh, we're starting to get somewhere. Now, before we actually start working on the colors in the background, let's um, 
set a few more things in uh, this uh, style element. Uh, copy paste this loop first off. Um, then let's set the default grid on um, uh, row and column in indices. So um, by default they're zero. Now we have another loop here. Okay, so um, the loop index here is going to be J. Um, we only set J starting from 1, and J goes up to N minus I. Okay, now uh, here we set a grid nth of type, and it's nth of type, not nth child, because we also have this uh, style element in front, so that would break nth child. So, um, dot. What the heck am I doing here? Um, nth child uh, n minus some i here. And here I have j plus 1. And here I set um, this is um, the column index. Now, something similar for the row index. Um, except I take this out of here. And add it in here. This is going to be I. Oh yeah. That. That's... Now let's compute a diagonal progress, and this depends on both the row and the column index. So we add them up, the row and the column index, and uh, then we divide everything um, by twice uh, the number of um, dots per edge, which is n minus p. So n minus p, uh, and out of this number of dots per edge we subtract 1, and this should do it. Now let's call this cell k0 and compute a complementary k1, which is just 1 minus k0. Okay, having done this, let's create a sas function get component. Um, and this is going to take a function name and a list of colors. Uh, return. Now, let's go back a bit for the default list of colors. And I'll just be taking this as the default list of colors. So, we only need the first and the last, the Okay, now here we have calc function, we have k0 times, and we need to interpolate this because uh, it's a sas function, so call, uh, and here I have function name, and end. Okay, so now having done this, just uh, copy paste this right here. And we have k1, and this is going to be 2 right here. So now when we set an HSL, get component lightness, for example. So now we're going to have this uh, three times, except the first time it's hue, uh, the second time it's uh, saturation. Okay, and uh, we have something. Okay, now they don't move uh, in the same direction, so let's do something about that. Um, okay, um, they go the other way around. Let's compute uh, a complementary. For P, 
Okay, uh, let's see. This way. Okay, uh, this uh, switches the colors. Now, that's great. We can uh, collapse the grid, we can uh, collapse uh, that function. And um, next, we need to move on to the animation. So let's go back here and look at the animations. So we have these two animations. Um, basically, they're the same thing, only offset. And as you can see, this is always uh, one in that interval, and only the other two change. So uh, what I'll be doing is making one animation out of two. So just copy paste that. Uh, this just uh, stays one um, all the time. So uh, yeah. Um, this is going to be P. Um, and now I'll be taking this and uh, putting it here, except it's going to be using uh, Q. Okay, um, let's change the name of the animation. Let's go back a bit to see uh, the animation duration. Um, four seconds, okay. So let's set that animation duration. Now uh, we have animation. Let's go for a simple ease in out. Infinite at first, let's see how that works. Okay, uh, now let's add a bit of a uh, delay in there. So um, we have the diagonal progress times something like this. Let's see. So um, yeah, it's not quite the same. I don't know if I can exactly reproduce the feel of that animation. Um, let's see. So we have something like this. Um, I probably won't be able to reproduce the feel of the animation exactly. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much the basic idea how I have it in mind. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want me to be able to do more in the future and not end up dying on the streets, please consider supporting my work. You can do it in one of the ways explained in the description below. Uh, by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon, which comes with some cool perks. Or you can make me very happy by getting me something off my Amazon wishlist. Again, there are links in the description. Or you can please share this to show the world what can be done with CSS these days. Because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, thanks for watching.